Welcome back everybody. A little bit late at the store today, um, but I thought I'd do a quick uh, filming of this. Uh, this computer was brought in from a, uh, by a customer, and it was not built by the customer. Uh, they wanted to play StarCraft, and they're wondering why it was running so slow. And so, if anybody is uh, familiar with what uh, motherboard this is, it's a FM2 motherboard. So, basically, this is running a AMD APU. And um, you see that one DIMM of uh, RAM right there? Well, it's not a single DIMM of, uh, of four uh, gigs or eight gigs. It's just a two gig stick. And so, the person who built this computer uh, didn't exactly, you know, set it up correctly. Uh, by design or by accident, who's to say? But uh, let's take a look at it anyways. Um, let's see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a task manager on this computer. And you've already seen that it's a, it's a Windows 10 computer. Uh, it was updated from Windows 7 uh, when Microsoft was doing that free upgrade to Windows 10. Problem with that is that this customer doesn't have the original disk, the Windows 7 disk. Um, and so if this hard drive ever were to crash or if they were to get a catastrophic virus or anything like that, bye bye Windows 10. Uh, we'll figure out something out for them later. Uh, but if you can see here, it's only got two gigs of RAM and it's running 60% of it roughly just to, just to run. And so this is the A10-6800K, uh, I believe a stock speed of 4.1 gigahertz and um, Terrible is the 4.4, and this is the first APU that's capable of running uh, DDR3 2133 megahertz, I believe. Um, so, brought it in, and uh, I told him that well, to make it, you know, play StarCraft, we have to do some upgrades, and so that's what we're going to do with this computer. This graphics card is an XFX. I believe this is going to be the um, the R7240M. I believe that's what it is. Uh, but no matter what, it's not capable of running StarCraft, you know, uh, definitely on, on the TV and what's that, that's what they're playing on. Uh, there's also something else about this uh, computer when it brought in, it was shaking. And the reason why it was shaking, was physically shaking, vibrating, was because this front fan has a missing fan blade. And that will cause it to wobble. And um, I don't know how the fan blade got broken, the front part of the case, uh, the front uh, uh, grill was not uh, punctured by any ways, any way that I could see. And so maybe it was just uh, put in there and it was broken, who knows, like I said, a lot of things uh, uh, unknown about uh, how this case is built and how this uh, computer is built. But the, uh, the, the rear 120 millimeter fan is working fine and the top one is fine too. And so we'll just replace the front one. Um, but uh, in the CX430M, the person who built it only put in two SATA uh, connector cables here, no peripheral, no Molex connectors, and they don't know where the rest of the cables went. So that is something we have to replace also. Uh, so I'm going to get these uh, uh, parts all laid out and then uh, we'll show you what we're going to put in there and uh, we'll continue from there. So what's going to go into this uh, upgrade? Well basically everything EVGA. It wasn't that uh, planned out actually it's just that everything was just really dirt cheap from EVGA this um, this time around well the cooler is going to be replaced with a cooler master uh, two, hyper 212 and this is going to be the one of the red LED we're not doing a push pull configuration on it uh, this time around um, just because we're not going to really overclock it that high uh, more than likely just gonna you know push a little bit past terrible speed uh, but I do have a 8 gig set of a uh, EVGA DDR3 uh, 2133 megahertz RAM, so we'll try to get that to run up uh, full speed, and it's gonna be upgraded with an EVGA GeForce uh, GTX 1060 3 gig uh, ver uh, 3 gigabyte video card, so that will go in there too, and we're gonna replace the power supply uh, with the EVGA 430 watt uh, 80 plus uh, certified power supply, and so more than enough power to run. Uh, this graphics card with um, the uh, mild overclock we're planning to do. So, it's been a few days since I've uh, done the last clip for this video build. It took a little bit longer than I expected to actually get this computer rebuilt and upgraded, um, mainly because I had to pull the motherboard out again. Uh, what I saw when I was uh, going through the uh, the rebuild was that 
one of the screws, that top right screw, was actually loose. It was crooked. I ended up, uh, the standoff was actually uh, spinning on the back. So I ended up taking off the entire motherboard and I realized that the previous builder did not know how to build a computer because uh, they basically put the standoffs in the wrong positions. And so there are many standoffs missing. And then uh, I was wondering, where, where did they go? Well, he kept the standoffs in the middle in place. So there are two or three standoffs touching the bare back of the motherboard, which is not a good thing. Uh, it, could short, it could have shorted out some uh, uh, traces, actually, because the, there were some solder points where it was almost touching. Uh, the owner's just been very lucky that this computer has lasted this long. And so I rebuilt the entire mother, uh, uh, case, basically. So I decided to strip it down and rewire everything, um, reband everything. And so here we have it. Um, if you're wondering why there's a blue <laughs> LED 120mm fan in the back um, with the red, it's, it's not like uh, this is something I designed. Uh, I, I myself have actually kept it a, a, a blue uh, you know, fan scheme or a red fan scheme. I would not have just mixed it like that. Uh, but the reason why that blue one is in, uh, is in the back is because um, what uh, I discovered was there was a 140mm fan on top. I thought that was bad because this case was wobbling. What happened was there's actually uh, there was actually a 140 millimeter fan in the front, and that had a broken blade. The reason why the blade was uh, the fan had uh, broken that I discovered is that there's a grill here, and this grill has warped over time. The grill that holds the uh, the uh, filter had warped over time and actually hit the front of the uh, of the fan. And that was actually what broke the fan off, and that's what uh, caused the shaking in the whole system. So if any of you guys have this fractal case, um, I don't know if you've come across that problem, but that was the problem in this particular case. Uh, I had to move the rear white fan to the front, onto the bottom, because for whatever reason, fractal decided to have a 140 on top, um, 140 on top and a 120 on bottom. And so uh, the customer didn't seem to be the type of person that t uh, tended to take care of their computer that much. So I thought it would be best to get more airflow uh, intake from the front where there's a filter, which he could uh, vacuum this out or just brush it off. Um, but every uh, everything else is in here. Again, this happened to be an EVGA build, kind of. Uh, we have the, one four, uh, the 430 watt EVGA uh, uh, 80 plus uh, rated power supply and it's more than enough power uh, for this system and we have the EVGA GTX 1060 uh, the micro one this is not the overclocked or superclocked version at all uh, we have the Cooler Master Hyper 212 red LED version here and uh, we had to reformat the entire uh, OS because um, the, OS, the OS was so corrupted and damaged I, I couldn't even reset the system uh, there's defragmentation that we couldn't take care of uh, there's so many viruses and other issues, so I ended up having to do a complete reformat of Windows 10 Home Premium on the system here. And so why don't I go around to the side. It's early morning here at the market, so it's a little bit more quiet than normal, which is nice. I should do more of these videos in the morning then. Um, let's see. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. I'm the only cameraman here. And so, yeah, we had to, I had to do a whole reformat on this. And then, as you can see, it's... Uh, uh, it is activated with a digital license, so this is all a legit operating system, and uh, it's much more responsive than before, de most definitely. Uh, but I have uh, Valley Benchmark installed, and uh, this is the first time I'm going to run it because it's early morning. I'm always on a, a tight schedule here, so why don't we do this? Why don't we set it at DirectX 11 settings? Yeah, it's ultra anti-aliasing. Yeah. Let's leave it off first. Let's see what happens, okay? Uh, and the resolution is going to be system. So this is a 1680 by 1050 monitor. It's, an, it's a very strange monitor. It's an older monitor, but um, um, it's fairly close to what you get at 1920 by 1080. Fairly close. So let's hit run and see what you, uh, see what we get for FPS here, guys. Um, there are a lot of other benchmarks, but Valley Benchmark is just something I like in particular. So, whoa, 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 look at this. We are getting uh, 80 to 90 FPS. That's, that's pretty insane. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, the... 
the EVGA card doesn't have its fan spinning until it gets to the 60s or 70s and uh, you know you guys could always uh, uh, download MSI Afterburner or EVGA Precision but wow wow I'm very 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 shocked at the FPS we're getting here um, so uh, I do have the computer overclocked so I do have it the CPU overclocked uh, not, a, not a crazy overclock at all because I've just turned off turbo mode and um, I've just locked in the top turbo speed at 4.4 gigahertz so this is not a, an, an extreme overclock by any means uh, we're getting to the 50s and 70s here 80s um, but the memory is at 2133 megahertz and I guess I remember reading reviews on this processor back in the day saying that the 2133 megahertz was needed to really get the power out of this APU and wow it, it, it really does I'm, I'm curious now why don't we because we're getting consistent 80s and 90s and 70s I, I want to actually quit this and let, why, don't we, why don't we turn on MT aliasing um, I, I don't think that we could okay so DirectX 11 Ultra anti-aliasing uh, you know we're going why don't we do a uh, why don't we hit an 8, 8x okay and let's see what happens so hitting uh, turning on 8x anti-aliasing now all the effects no v-sync on a 1680 by uh, 1050 monitor and uh, We'll we'll see what kind of uh, frame uh, drops we get now. You know, uh, let's see how it runs. Okay, so now we're getting to the 60s, 65 FPS, 70 FPS with 8x anti-aliasing, guys. Um, pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Uh, we're getting 80 uh, FPS right now. So, you know, going to about 60, 70 FPS. So, incredible performance, radical, incredible performance. I'm blown away, actually. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't have a doubt about the 1060. I did have a certain doubts about the, uh, uh, the processor. Um, but, wow. Foreseeably, if you overclock the processor even more, maybe on liquid cooling, uh, with that 2133 megahertz RAM, and yeah. Uh, really awesome performance you know I'm, I'm very surprised and so um, uh, just by this benchmark alone I, I, I would recommend you know anybody who has an A, A10 uh, 6800 7000 series you know um, put 2133 megahertz RAM in there grab a RX uh, 480 or a uh, GeForce GTX 1060 and you guys are good to go. I mean, wow, great performance. Great performance. Any questions or comments, guys, please post them at the bottom of the video. Hope you enjoyed the build.